You know, you bring up Teilhard de Chardin, who I knew when I was 14. And one of the things he said to me, he had a thick fret, fret tracks, and he said, Jean, the people of your time will be taking the tiller of the world, but they cannot go directly. They must touch upon every culture, every people, and bring it together. And I was, as I was watching these incredible events by you, you band of angels, that's what you are, you know, where you have crossed the great divide of otherness and you have brought so many ideas and people and new motivations. You give a new word to motivations. It's, it's a great celebration. It's a great unfolding and above all, it is a great loving. And I feel so honored to be here with you. I'm reminded of the words, the wonderful words also of um, Gandhi. <laughs> and when he said that as human beings, our greatness lies not so much in being able to remake the world as being able to remake ourselves. Whoa. And what I see in this last several hours is so many of you who have consciously and conscientiously remade yourselves and so the world follows. You know, let me tell you what I also see. I believe that every one of you is a cosmic agent placed in a, um, a biodegradable space-time suit. You know, that is pattern, your pattern to operate at different levels of, of wonder, of excellence, to make a difference in this particular space time of Earth's history. I mean, certainly, friends, given the nature of the, the problems and the challenges that face us, we have to think about what are these other possibilities within us. Some of you know I've spent a lifetime in, uh, studying human capacities but also I can't give up because historically, historically in evolution, as well as in culture, dangers seem to push us to a higher level, what we sometimes call emergence through emergency. I mean, the set of global problems that humanity is facing presently may turn out to be as important to our continued evolution as the oxygen crisis was to emerging life. Never in the history of the human race have the dangers seemed so extreme, yet in their role as evolutionary catalysts, they may, they, they may just what is needed to put us up to a higher level, one that requires new templates, optimal templates in your mind, your body, your soul, which if practiced, allow for all manner of new growth and opportunity. Plato talked about the idos, the idos, the divine ideas, that everything has a divine idea. And oh, dear friends, what I am seeing in all you is people who have heartened to the divine idea in themselves and are bringing it forth in extraordinary ways. Surely we have arrived on this earth at the great time of, yes, deconstruction and recreation, a time which I've come to call second genesis. Your stories, your capacities are shifting as your story as people of, a, of the world unity is becoming part of what I think is truly the story of stories, which is the present time. The present time is truly the great unique singularity of history. So yes, we ask, how can we go beyond the, the masochism of decades of toxic thoughts, waking up from the bad dream, which we can no longer support any more than we can support peak oil? <laughs> I have a statement that I say to myself every day, just to keep myself on the right track. I, I say, I agree, I agree to, rel to relinquish those limiting patterns of body, mind, spirit. I agree to the old, relinquish the old emotions, the old volitions, the old understanding. 
I agree to discovering ways of transcending and transforming the local self so that extraordinary life can arise. My passion, I agree to explore my passion to engender the passion for the possible in my human development while discovering what that possible is. I agree to reach out toward my higher destiny while knowing that it is reaching out to me and that is as one who helps world unity to emerge. How do you do this? You know, a major thought is that the universe dwells in each of us and that the past, the present and future are simultaneous. That's part of the new physics, simultaneous. You are not a, an encapsulated bag of skin dragging around a dreary little ego, not at all. You are the entire universe expressing itself in miniature. And that is why you have the capacity of seeing reality as we've seen so beautifully, seeing reality and working in reality from so many more perspectives, even that of future humans. One day my dog was pawing at a rug, just pawing and pawing at a rug in my bedroom. What is it? What is it? He just looked at me and kept pawing. So I went to look at the rug. I lifted it up and there was a paper, a scientific paper by a remarkable lady by the name of Anne-Louise Smitsman. And it was about how the future actually exists. And she's also a quantum physicist. And I said, whoa, that's, that's right up my alley. That's what I'm so, we have the future human in us. So I immediately got in touch with her. And since that time, March of two years, a year and a half ago, every day on Facebook, we write together and we wrote a trilogy on the future human. It's gonna come out in January. Actually, it was a huge (laughs) book, about 900 pages. And it ended up not being a book, but being a doorstop. So we've turned it into a trilogy. But one of the things that we know is that the future human exists in us. And when you know this, when you really know it, not just understand it, but feel it, it gets in your bones, it flows like briny sea in your blood. It is the biggest paradigm shift of all. It changes everything inside of you. It even reignites your pilot light. Oh, friends, the point is also that you physically have to do something to move out of the old, no longer working condition. You announce to the universe in very specific and active ways that you are ready to change your belief structures because after all, belief structures reality. So, okay, you conscious self-aware super organisms, each one of you, As you enter the higher cosmic agenda, the divine matrix, and you tap into the matrix, you then enter mysteries that transform your body, your mind, as they reveal the relationship of yourself to the whole. They empower you, and you begin to express yourself in richly creative new ways. In other words, you begin to become a revelation to others an intellectual and psychological beacon, an evocateur of new patterns, new relationships, new discoveries. You bring new mind and new matter to the old world that's passing away, and you serve as catalysts of change and pathfinders of deeper realities. Walt Whitman, our great American poet and philosopher wrote, from this hour, I ordain myself loosed of limits and imaginary lines, going where I list, my own master, total and absolute, listening to others, considering well what they say, pausing, searching, receiving, contemplating gently, but with undivided, undeniable will, divesting myself of the holes that would hold me. I am larger, better than I thought. (laughs) I did not know I had so much goodness. And then he says, on this hour, I adorn myself 
loose of limits and imaginary lines. Oh, friends, are we willing to ordain ourselves this day, loose of limits and imaginary lines? Imagine the symphonic chorus of the epigenetics, you know, the epic genes, turn-ons that would result in our body-mind systems. Everything we know is connection. Everything is connectivity, bridging, fractal resonance. Everything is patterned after the universe to which we are connected. It is a great game. It is a great inspiration to higher creativity. And yes, as you become part of this cosmic consciousness, a deeper mind actually moves into your own. You gain a much larger sense of your unique role and destiny in this time. Of course you are an evolutionary agent. Of course you're an infinite consciousness localized in a human body, brain, mind system. And you must never, ever underestimate your power. And that explains why creative people seem to feel themselves aligned, allied, hooked up to a higher order of guidance. We're living in a time that is the very fulcrum of creativity because the only expected these days is the unexpected. The only explicable is the inexplicable. Everything that was isn't anymore. Everything that isn't is coming to be because ours is the era of phenomenal change. The most radical deconstruction and reconstruction the world has ever known. More and more history happening faster and faster. Life paths that contain us and have sustained us across millennia are vanishing. We are guests at a wake for a way of being that has been ours for hundreds, even thousands of years, but we are also guests at a birthing, a massive birthing that has never been seen before. Oh, dear friends, that is why you are among the most important people in history for what you do with your lives and professions, what I see you be doing with your life, how you tell creatively the new story, how you are the new story, I think makes a difference as truly as to whether we as a people grow or die. We are the crossroads between worlds, between species, between ourselves and forever. You know yourself to be its pilgrims and its parents and no old formulas or stopgap solutions will suit for a new world to be born. We must bring a creative new mind to bear. And that's why I always quote my favorite poet and playwright Christopher Fry when he says, thank God our time is now when wrong comes up to meet us everywhere, never to leave us till we take the longest stride of soul folk ever took. Huh. Friends, you, you people who I've been feeling so deeply close to and in a state of awe and gratitude, you are at the center of the nervous system of emerging history. And thus you have the opportunity to play a role in the greatest transition drama the world has ever seen. The time we are in right now may well be the great either or of history. And you are pressing the restart button, the restart button. I ask, are we sucking away at a cosmic pap? Are we embryos in a cosmic womb? Or are we cells in a gigantic organism? To turn our consciousness to this kind of speculation, is to wrench ourselves from the rust of millennia, from the habits of insular ideas. We are trying to make a gigantic leap of faith going cosmic without ever having necessarily been there. Yes, because do not doubt, we are being prepared and you friends, you are a major part of it. You are being prepared. We are being prepared for the biggest shift in history. It has very practical consequences. Creative expression, excitement, manifestation, co-creation, creating the world that works. But this next stage is also one in which each one of you serves as bridge and builder of cosmic 
or evolutionary principles into life on this planet, and you do so with courage and commitment and with no turning back, <laughs> some of you become a luminous grounding force of manifestation of God's stuff into time. You become miracle literate. And what I'm calling miracles or extraordinary events become, as many of you know, the ordinary things of everyday life, whether it takes forms of healing, of remarkable synchronicities, as people, resources, events, and timing come into your life in a novelistic way as we have heard today. Patterns fall into place with ease and beauty, with certainty, and you discover that your life is advancing the world in little and big and enormous ways. You become ones who live in such a state of illumination where all things in your purview are pulled into resonance and meaning and the furthest star is in some ways right next door. You know, humans in heart and soul are mythic beings. You are mythic links. You are living mythic lives. I mean, compared to your ancestors of the 14th century, you better believe it, they would know you as the great heroes or heroines of all reality. One of the things about myths, myths sustain and shape our emotional attitudes. They provide us with purpose. They energize our everyday la lives and they provide us with life purpose. And when we link our lives with the experiences of mythic characters, we inherit a cache, a large number of experiences that illumine and strengthen our own. That's why all over the world, and I've worked in 109 countries, I look for what is the activating myth, and then we play it out. And we play it out so that we become part of its undisguised relevance for our lives and our transformation. We also work with archetypes. What are archetypes? Because we have become directors of a world that up to now has mostly directed us. And this exponential growth in responsibility requires a corresponding enhancement in consciousness and psyche as formidable as it is necessary for as things are now. Huh? The extremely limited consciousness has the powers once mythically accorded to the gods. And as we attempt to play catch up, we find ourselves seeking the enrichment of archetypal friendships an archetypal base that can provide us with missing components of intelligence, wisdom, compassion. What is trying to manifest is a new species that is within ourselves, perhaps from the future, attempting to unfold in your life in new and critical ways. You are central to this new myth, this new story, as you are becoming that of extraordinary resonance and relevance. You are becoming archetypal in yourself through your endeavors. Or if you prefer, you are yourself growing the archetypes, growing the gods. These next final years are not final. They are the most crucial time in human history. That's why I say, be not afraid, you were made for these times. There is a coding within each of us that is ready to give us patterns for life in this time. Just like as a little tiny little embryo, fertilized embryo, it's like a little dot, but it had the codes to unfold into you and your life. So it appears that there is a code within us ready to give us patterns for life in this world that transforms, that works. The very universe may be constantly emerging from a haze of possibility, and we may have a con we inhabit a cosmos made real in part by our own observations. We are the shapers and the creators living in this participatory universe. This godded universe, as Meister Eckhart said, the eye by which I see God is the same eye by which God sees me. 
So we are part of a universe that is a work in progress. We are tiny patches of a universe containing the totality, looking at itself and building itself. My Sicilian grandmother from Syracuse used to look around at the world and say, hey, Gina, abundanza, abundanza, just the sheer abundanza, the abundance of things. And then my mother, Maria Nunziata Serafina Graziella Fiorina Perpetua Tedaro, who married my father and became Mary Houston. <laughs> she kept talking about, oh, Jean, look for the conscienza generosa, the generous consciousness. The generous is so important. How, how we hold in thought and intention the amplitude of consciousness and feeling about a thing we know will often determine its expressive form, the manifestation of your intentions in the world of space and time. Those of you who hold the inner landscape of the splendid and joyous life, you discover that then a more splendid and joyous life will probably manifest as an outcome. We are always in the position of creating actuality of what is always potentiality. We are participating all the time in creation. Today, as we move into a planetary culture, we see a convergence of the sharing of the whole palette of human culture, beliefs, ways of being. We find all over the world the attempt to try and coalesce into a new and higher unity for which we are seemingly unprepared but which you, my friends, are doing the extraordinary work of re-preparation. Grounded in relationship with spiritual reality, we become God seeds. Our capacity for growth and deepening truly, virtually infinite. And since growth goes on in the infinite world, and the archetypes within you are continuing to grow as well, you also have to work to develop your potential in this incredible depth world, what Jesus referred to as laying up treasures in heaven. And the discovery of these treasures is made possible through the regular communion with the deep spiritual partners who know their purpose, what is Rumi referred to as the treasuries of unseen generosities. The treasuries of unseen generosities. I believe that we will be equal to the requirements and the responsibilities of new centuries only if we continue to nurture the innate seeds of our own divinity and have released those limited local parts and then risen to the resurrection of ourselves into a higher unitive reality that is both spiritual consciousness and global spirit. That's what you're doing. I close with the full poem by Christopher Fry, which tells us the truth. The human heart must go to the lengths of God. <laughs> Dark and cold we may be, but this is no winter now. The frozen misery of centuries cracks, breaks, begins to move. The thunder is the thunder of the flood, the flow, the upstart spring. Thank God our time is now when wrong comes up to meet us everywhere, never to leave us till we take the longest stride of soul folk ever took. Affairs are now soul-sized. The enterprise is exploration into God. Oh, what are we waiting for? What are we making for? It takes so many thousand years to wait, but shall we wait for pity's sake? Oh, dear friends, after seeing and listening and sharing with you today, I know, I know we are awakening. Thank you. Mm -hmm.